Okay, so you want a man to think about you and miss you when you're not around. You want his desire and interest to grow for you. You want his love to deepen and for him to chase and pursue you as the one woman that he wants in his life. Today, I'm going to go over and give you a five-step system to making him miss you badly. And if you use this, it will work. Hello, my name is Matthew Coast and welcome to Commitment Connection. First, if before we get started, if you're really serious about having and getting into and creating a relationship that makes you feel loved and seen and appreciated, then make sure you go to thegoddesscommunity.com and check out joining our community there. Okay, so how do you make a man miss you? What are the five steps that I'm going to go over today? So before, before we start, if you're here and you are watching this right now, make sure that you say hello in the chat and let us know where it is that you're watching this from. It's really cool seeing so many people from all over the world watching our live streams. So number one is you want to connect with him on a deep emotional level. So uh, I get a lot of women that come to us and they're, they, you know, they're like, oh, guys just want sex. Why do guys are just interested in sex with me? And a lot of times they're not really connecting with men on anything more than just a surface level. And then they wonder why a guy only wants a surface level relationship with them. Well, if you want him to want something deeper, then go somewhere deeper with him. If you want the relationship to be deeper and if you want him to miss you more, then go somewhere deeper with him. And so how you do this is you become curious about him and learn about his struggles, learn about his successes, learn about his childhood, you know, how he's gotten to where he is with his life and his career. You know, find out what really makes him tick. Why does he do what he does? You know, what gets him excited about life? What are his passions? What are his goals? What are his dreams that he has in life, right? Because those are like the deep, those are the deep emotional things that, that rest at the core of his identity, of who he is and what he wants to be and what he wants to create in the world. And when you connect with that, when you, when you can pull that out of him and have him share that with you, that's a great first step in connecting with him on a much deeper level. And so that's what you want to do. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. One of the ways is just ask him. Ask him what his goals are. Ask him what his dreams are. Another way is to ask him about like when he was a kid. Like what is he? what did he want to be when he grew up? Because a lot of times what ends up happening, as you probably know, is that we have goals and dreams and ideas of who we want to be when we're children. And then when we grow up, sometimes life gets in the way, right? And that doesn't end up being what we do for our career, for our life. So sometimes we have hobbies that we fulfill our passions and dreams in life. Sometimes we don't go after them at all. And if he isn't going after them at all, it can be really powerful to find out what those things are that he did really love because that will pull that out of him and remind him of those things, whether he's going after them or not. And that can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. So number two is make him feel amazing when you're around. And so be someone that who brings, be someone who he really enjoys being around so much that he can't wait to see you again. And you'd think that this one is kind of a little bit more obvious, but sometimes we'll get women that'll come into our community and they'll be like, oh, why, what, you know, how do I get, make this guy miss me? How do I make him feel all these great things about me? And you're like, oh, well, what are your kind of interactions with this guy up to this point? And they'll be like, oh, well, you know, we argue all the time. I always pick fights with him about these different things and, you know, like all this stuff. And you're like, Okay, so basically, you know, it's like you've created this weird environment there. I'm just, I'm adding the, the chat just because I, th I thought that might be fun to add the chat to our live stream here so that you can see what everybody's saying. 
So make him feel amazing when you're around him because when he, he, if he feels really, it's like anything, right? If you go and you feel amazing around something and then you leave that, right? A lot of people miss, like for instance, you know, just talking about other things, a lot of people might miss other experiences that they have, experiences of eating, right? Like, oh, I, I really would love to have that again. They'll think about it in their mind. They're like, oh, it was so good when I was eating that pizza or uh, when I was eating that steak and they'll, they'll think about it and they'll miss it, right? And, and it's, it's the same concept. Obviously, you're not a steak or a pizza, <laughs> although it's the same concept that goes there, right? It's, it's this great emotional experience that you have around something. And when you have that great emotional experience, when you go away from it, all of a sudden you miss it. You're like, man, that was really, really good. And so one of the most powerful ways that you can do this is show, other than being kind and sweet and amazing around him, which you should be, <laughs> be kind and sweet and amazing when you're around him, is show him that you support who he is and who he wants to become in his life. And so in the last one, we talked about figuring out who he is and what he wants to become. And in this one, you're, what you're doing is what you want to do is find parts of his personality where he, where you can see that part of his personality helping him become that person that he wants to become. So for instance, let's say that he's an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's an easy one because I'm an entrepreneur. And so if he, if he want, if he's an entrepreneur, or let's say he wants to become an entrepreneur and you talk to him and you see that he's really charming for instance, or you talk to him and you hear him talk about something where he was really pers uh, he really persevered towards something or he fought for something or he was really kind to somebody, like let's say he was kind to a, a waiter or a waitress or anything. You just find things that that he does that he you can tell you're like, wow, you know, I can really tell that that you know you could be you could be a really great entrepreneur one day because I just I saw you interacting with that waitress and how kind she is and and I don't you know I don't know much about business but I think you really have to be kind and gentle and loving towards people in order to have a great business and you know just the way that you interacted with her it, it tells me that you know you could be a really great business person one day you know and you know what I mean? Um, and so basically you're, you're setting that up for him and you're talking to him about that. There's a way to kind of like cut it off there, right? If it becomes a little bit too like mushy gushy kind of lovey dovey type of thing, you could always be like, you know, it's too bad. There's, there's like ways to cut it back, right? Like a little tease where you're just like, ah, it's too bad. You're such a dork, you know, like it may, I, I might, I might really like you or something, you know? And, and, and basically, if you throw that tease in there, it, it can be a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun, and a little bit feeling less like it's super like lovey-dovey, gushy type stuff that's going on there. So if you understand what I'm talking about, say, I get it in the chat. Say, I get it. So of, another thing that you want to pay attention to here is avoiding falling in love with his potential because... We get lots of women that come to us that say this stuff. They're like, oh, well, you know, he said he was going to be this and he said he was going to be that and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he's not doing it. And so I'm like, you know, nagging him and criticizing him and I'm going to force him to be a better man, right? And, and men don't like that. Men, <laughs> you know, men want you to love them for who they are. And so you want to, and, and for your best interest, it's to love him for who he is because he may never reach that person that he talks about or that he dreams about or whatever. And so if you can't live with the person that he is today, then it'll be a problem if he doesn't ever end up making it to be that person that he wants to become. As we said, you know, a lot of times life gets in the way with our dreams and our goals that we have. And so that, that can happen. It can happen. So make sure that you see him for who he is and love him for who he is. So number one was connect with him on a deep emotional level. Number two is make him feel amazing when you're around him. Number three is creating an emotional range with him. And so I just want you to notice that we're talking about emotions right now, this whole thing. And a lot of women come to us and they're like, oh, do men even have emotions? 
we all have emotions. We all decide everything that we're doing based on emotions and then we backwards rationalize it with our intellect. So absolutely, everybody does things with emotions. Otherwise, everybody would be... All men would be really thin, they'd make lots of money, and they would have great relationships if they didn't do everything based on emotions. But we all do stupid stuff, we all do great stuff, and we do that based on our emotions. And that's why we talk so much about emotions, because when he feels those emotions for you, when that goes away, that's when he'll miss you. And so you wanna create an emotional range for him. Being happy isn't the only emotion that men want to experience. And men typically don't experience as much emotion as women do. And so whenever you can connect with him and connect him with emotion, that will help him experience more emotion for himself and it'll connect him to you in a deeper level. So think of this like a good movie, right? There's, there's bad movies, there's mediocre movies, and there's good movies. Bad movies are movies that suck, they're boring, they're not very funny, and you never want to see them again, right? <laughs> and a mediocre movie is, an, is a movie that's kind of like one-dimensional. It's fun, but it's like, yeah, you know, who really cares that much about the movie? I mean, it was good, it was, it was cool to watch one time, but do I ever want to see it again? Am I ever going to think about it again? Probably not. Maybe if somebody brings it up in a conversation, I'll be like, oh yeah, I saw that movie that one time. But that's not what you want. You want a good movie, right? A good movie is a movie that, that pulls on your heartstrings. It makes you laugh. It makes you get scared. It makes you cry. It makes you feel anticipation. And you go back and you watch it over and over and over again. You can't get enough of it because you love seeing it. And, and when you leave, you're like, man, that was such a good movie. Like, what an awesome movie I just watched. Have you ever seen such an amazing movie? Oh, that one point where such and such did whatever, right? And, and you talk about all these things because it was such a great movie. And now you don't, you don't have to become an actress or something like that. However, the, the point is still there, right? Like the more emotion that you experience, the more things that happen, the more dimensions there are to what happens with you and him, the more emotionally engaged he'll be, the more he'll feel like he misses you and he wants you back and he wants to see you again and he wants to be with you again. And so the fastest way to elicit these types of emotions is to ask questions. And the way that you do that, and, and so, sometimes what you'll have to do, and this takes a little bit of courage on your part, is to come out and talk about things yourself, right? Where if, if you want to structure to this, what you'd end up doing is you'd say something like, you know, one thing that really kind of scares me is... And then you talk about something that really scares you. For instance, let's say you're really scared of spiders and you're like, oh man, you know, one thing that really scares me is spiders. And, and you know, I feel like I'm really confident in a lot of other areas of my life and it's fun to go out and do things and I'm adventurous. But as soon as I see a spider, it's like I curl up into a ball and I start crying and I like get really scared and I like freak out and I just... You know, like, I, I, it's like I can't do anything anymore when I see these spiders, right? And, and one, doing something like that will make him feel like he wants to, like, protect you and do all those things because it's kind of like this girly, like, emotional thing that you're doing. And then when you're done with that, you can ask him what he's afraid of, right, which elicits even more emotion. So the first one's eliciting kind of this, this masculine dr primal drive in him and then asking him about what he's kind of scared of will allow him to think of things that he's actually scared of and and feel like get a get a little bit of a glimpse or a little bit of a taste of that and if you want to take it even further ask him about why or what happened or have you ever experienced that before so let's say that he's scared of clowns or something and he's like, yeah, you know, when I was a kid, and you ask him like, why? Or like, is there something that happened? And he's like, oh, you know, when I was a kid, 
that I went to the circus and there's these clowns all around and I was just really scared. And then my mom like showed up one day in my room and she's like, boo. And she like came out with this clown mask on and I just, I was scared out of my mind. This is the adventures and horrible and horrible parents stories right here. <laughs> but you know, so for instance, let's say that something like that happened to him. And then all of a sudden it's like, He's experiencing all these things again. He's feeling it and he's talking about it and, and he's, he's getting these emotions coming up. And so when he's around you then, he's, he's associating all kinds of different emotions around you. And as long as you're doing the other things that we talked about before this, where you're connecting with them, you're making them feel really good most of the time and you're connecting with them on a deep level, then what's going to end up happening is that it's going to be like this little blip of kind of this other emotion and it's going to create this more more connectivity to you than just being kind of this one dimensional kind of thing where you're connecting with them you're just happy it's superficial and it's like oh is this really anything does any of this mean anything who really cares and instead you're creating an emotion so so other things like you know what's uh, you know what? What things have ever have ever made them him cry before? What things have made him laugh? Like what? What does he love? You know, like all, all these different things. Like just ask him questions about different types of emotions. Talk about different types of emotions that you've had. Tell stories about it, which is the second best way to do this is through storytelling. Which I I gave an example a little bit earlier, which is kind of the 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 spider story. Although that's a really small story, you can get into telling even longer stories about actual things that happen or maybe there's an, a specific instance where there's a spider and it scared you and freaked you out. Well, that's, that's another great way to have him elicit these emotions because he's going through kind of this, this experience with you and so he's experiencing these emotions as you're experiencing them and it's a really really powerful thing to do and so if you have different stories that you can tell about difficult things that have happened in your life fun times sad times scary times those are things that you can talk about and have fun with and you know as long as it's not something that's like still debilitating to you in the current time i'd only talk about things that really especially if you're kind of new to the relationship and it's not a deeper relationship, you haven't been together for a long time. Just talk about some things that you've kind of gotten over or things that aren't a really big deal to you right now so that it doesn't become this kind of weird dynamic where you're kind of pushing into kind of this, this realm of being super vulnerable in a way that he's not really sure how to deal with really early on. If you get what we're talking about here, say, I get it. Say, I get it. All right, so another way to do this, and this is kind of a more passive way to do it, is to get involved with things that create emotions. So go do fun things, go do scary things, go do sad things, go, go to comedy shows, go do, try doing something that's spontaneous, daring, risky, adventurous, and you can just do all kinds of different types of things, right? Go go gambling one time if you guys aren't gambling and he doesn't have a problem with that. Or go go try something. Go go to an area you've never been to, a part of town you've never been to, and check out something you've never seen before. Just go do fun things. And the more kind of fun and interesting things and more things that have emotion tied to it, the more he'll start associating different kind of aspects of things to you. So number one was connect with him on a deep emotional level. Number two is make him feel amazing when you're around. Three is create emotional range. Four is be different than the other women that he meets. And so you want him to feel like you're special, like you're different than all the other women that he meets out there. And you know, the, the fastest way that you can do this is to just show different sides of your personality. So you have lots of different things that make you interesting and quirky and unique and about your personality. If you don't think that you have these things, you probably do. And what you'll want to do is just take some time, get like a notepad out and just say, hey, what are some 
fun, different things about my personality, just write a question and just keep a running list of it. And if that doesn't really work, then go ask your friends, go ask your family, go ask people that you know, just say, hey, what are some quirky or interesting things about me? And just see what they have to say about it. And if you really want to spark somebody's knowledge of that, just tell them quirky and interesting things about them and usually they'll tell those things back to you. But what you want to do is let some of those things come out. Let some of those weird little things that you have come out. You know, maybe you are really interested in panda bears or something and at home you've got a huge panda bear collection and it's kind of embarrassing. It's a little quirky, but it's something that you do and it's something that you like and it's something that you have and so you talk about that. Or you know, what, whatever is going on with your personality, just, just let it come out. And, or uh, another thing that you want to do to make yourself kind of special and stand out is develop the behaviors of a high quality woman. And so you attract how you act. And if you want to attract a high quality man, you have to have behaviors that are in alignment with being a high quality woman. And so not to say that people don't have inherent quality, but you have to differentiate with through people, right? If a, if a guy's a guy, he's going to look at all these women and he's going to be like, which one is the most valuable to me? And if you're acting really needy and clingy and desperate and then wonder why you have these low self-esteem men that are attracting you, it's there's a good reason why that happens. And so what you want to do is you want to develop bu abundance and you want to develop all these different characteristics. I did a live stream on this, I think it was a couple weeks ago, where I go through an entire kind of system on how to do this. And and actually, I'm putting together a, a full system about how to do this, a full program about how to do this. It's going to be called The Forever Woman, and I'm giving it away for free for joining our community. It'll be done here in a couple of weeks. And if you want to go and check that out, go to thegoddesscommunity.com and check out joining, out, uh, joining our community there for free. So... The, the fastest way to kind of differentiate, differentiate yourself because so many women come to relationships and they start acting really needy and clean and desperate is to do what number, step number five is, which is creating scarcity. So a fire can't grow if you're always smothering it. And so what you want to think about his desire and his interest and his being in love with you is, is kind of like a fire. And so you want to let it grow. You want to give it oxygen. You want to give it air. You don't want to completely leave it alone, which is what some women say. So a lot of times when, when I say stuff like this, they're like, oh, become scarce. And they completely disappear. They're like, abracadabra, and they're gone, right? And then all of a sudden they're gone. And they're like, oh, I never contact him. I never reach out to him. I never respond to him. And you're like, oh, well, I couldn't imagine why he's not trying to talk to you anymore, <laughs> right? So there, there's, a, there's a middle ground here. There's always a middle ground for all of these things that we talk about. And... What it, but what it is, is most women come to us and they're in a state of being needy and clean and smothering. And so they're smothering a guy, trying to talk to him all the time. I send him messages every single day, you know, 12 times a day and he doesn't respond. And it's like, okay, chill out, create some scarcity, pull back a little bit. He can't miss you if he doesn't experience life without you there. And so if you want him to miss you, You've got to pull back a little bit and allow him to miss you. Give him some space to miss you. Give him some space to wonder what it is that you're doing. What's she doing right now? Is she out with other guys? Why is she, you know, I sent her this message at, at 8 p.m. on a Friday and she didn't respond until the next day. Why, why was that, right? And it's because you have other things going on in your life, which is what you want to do, right? We, we value and appreciate things because of the contrast between experiencing it and not experiencing it. So it's, we don't value and appreciate things because it's there all the time. We value and appreciate it because of the contrast. And so that is what causes us to miss it. And so stop sending him good morning texts every single day. Stop 
right? And s stop doing things where you're just trying to constantly reach out to him and figure out what's going on with him and talking to him and smothering him all the time and finding out, you know, what's going on with you? Are you mad at me? You know, all that kind of stuff. Stop doing all that stuff and chill out, lean back, relax a little bit, you know, let there be some space for him and some room for him to come to you and pursue you. Start having other things that are going on in your life that allow you to have time, space, and attention away from him. Give him the gift of missing you by creating space and scarcity. But like I said, you don't want to leave the fire because the fire is going to go off and burn in other places. What you want to do is just give him some room, give him some room to breathe, give him some oxygen, and allow him to kind of build and grow that flame of desire and and love that he has for you. And so that's it. Number one was connect with him on a deep emotional level. Two is make him feel amazing. Three, emotional range. Four, be different. Five, create scarcity. And so next we're going to do question and answer. So if you have questions that you want to ask, make sure that you put them in the chat and I will get to them next. But before we go there, if you're really serious about having an amazing relationship where a man loves you and he sees you for who you are and he cherishes you and he adores you, make sure that you go to thegoddesscommunity.com and check out joining our community there. We give you a bunch of free stuff for joining our community. You get question and answer with our, our one of our coaches and you can join our support network of other women that are going through a similar journey. Some of them are on the other side of it. And so go and check that out. And I'll let you learn more about that at thegoddesscommunity.com. All right, so let's see what everybody's saying. Got lots of highs. Hi, hi, hi. Marisha, Tracy. Helena Hart's here. <laughs> Helena Hart. My favorite person in the world, Helena Hart, is here. And I, I told Helena that whenever she comes to our live streams that I'd always say wonderful and amazing things to her because I just think she's just so amazing and so adorable and just so wonderful. And so what, what could I say today that's really unique and amazing about Helena Hart? I think, I think Helena is... You know, one, one thing I, I want to mention was that that one time that we went and sang karaoke together at that Irish pub <laughs> over near her place. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I really want to appreciate you and tell you that uh, I, I really uh, had, a, had a lot of fun hanging out with you and spending time with you. And I think that... Uh, you're one of the coolest people that I, I know, and I appreciate all the people that you've helped me connect with and uh, all the time that you've stayed connected with me and all the things that you've helped me out with in my life, and I just, I think you're awesome, Helena, so thank you so much for being on the live stream today. <laughs> so... Let Latrice says, hi, Mississippi. Chelsea says, New York. Brianna from California. Sonia from Colorado. Buffalo, New York. Donna says, hello from Ohio. That's actually where I was born. I was born in Ohio. Esther says, Oman. Wow. Cool. Oman. Hello from UK. Yorkshire, UK. Cool. Huntington Beach. Leslie says, how are you? I'm fairly new in a new relationship. We've been dating since mid to late April. He hasn't said, I love you. I want him to be the one. I want him to be the one for you as well. The crazy unicorn lady says, I'm watching this from Illinois, Oklahoma. Patty Doe says, Hampshire in the UK. Bulgaria, Cammy from Bulgaria. Like, it's so cool to see so many people from all over the world. Shannon Wilson says she's from Cincinnati, Ohio. That's where I was born and raised, Cincinnati, Ohio. That's cool. So Georgia, Indiana. Shazine says, 
Hey, I have a question. At first, I attract guys greatly, but after some time, he loses interest. Help. Yet you're probably doing exactly what I'm talking about here, which is a, a lot of women, what will end up happening is they'll get a guy and he'll be really, really into them. And then what ends up happening is usually the guy starts out chasing women from the be very beginning, right? And so a guy approaches, he pursues, he tries to push towards a sexual relationship. And then at some point, what ends up typically happening is the woman's biology starts kicking in and she wants to start connecting with him, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. But what ends up happening is a lot of times women will start smothering a guy and then he'll start like kind of backing off and she's like, hey, what's going on? And she starts becoming like the planner and she starts taking over the masculine role and the next thing you know, she's chasing him. And so I don't know much about your situation, Shazine. You know, you might want to talk a little bit more about it, but that's, that's typically what happens a lot of time with a lot of women, and which is why we talk a lot about leaning back and chilling out and relaxing in a lot of these situations. So Jackie says she's from Chattanooga. Nice. Ivana says Serbia. Nice. Serbia. Nancy says Park City, Utah. That's a cool place. Fort Worth, Texas. Aaron. Nice. Trisha says greetings from Germany. Cool. Cool. Germany. Marietta, New York. Shireen says, what if we don't spend that much time together? For, for example, I haven't seen him for about a month. Well, okay, so are you talking to him on the phone all the time? You know, why haven't you seen him in about a month? Is it because you're in a long-distance relationship, or is it because you guys are talking so much over the phone or text that he doesn't feel any need to meet up with you and find out what's going on with you and you're so available that he doesn't actually miss you. Flower Child says, hello, Matthew. I say, hello, Flower Child. Hello. Donna says, the guy I'm seeing, I have been using things you say and it's working well for us. Awesome. I'm always playful when I'm around him. I always encourage his dreams and he is doing it. You know what, Donna? High five to your awesomeness. A lot of women go through our stuff and they look at my stuff and they don't end up using any of it, which is why they don't get results. So props to you, Donna, for using what we talk about and getting results here. Poetry Lover says, this is incredibly important. It is incredibly important. You're right. Angel says, I have a question. This guy I was seeing told me the other day he misses and loves me, but I text him yesterday and he hasn't even contacted me since he told me that stuff. Did he mean it or not? Yeah, I mean, it depends on what's going on with him. When did, he con when did you contact him? What did you say when you contacted him? You know, what's going on in that situation? Because, I mean, if he really, like, loves and misses you, like... He's going to respond to you. You know, it just kind of depends on what's going on with him, right? So, I mean, it's a little weird that he hasn't responded in a day. So that might tell you something a little bit more about what's actually going on there. But has it been an actual day? Was it like last night and now it's this morning? It depends on what's going on, you know, what kind of, a, kind of communication you have. You'd have to tell us a little bit more about your situation. It's, it's difficult. A lot of times people will kind of throw out these like real quick things. They're like, hey, there's this guy and I said something to him and, he ha and it's tomorrow and he hasn't said anything back. Does he love me? And it's like, <laughs> how do we know anything about your situation when it, we don't hear more about it? So Nancy says, what if son is cranky and everything I say gets twisted? trying to be supportive and make time amazing, yet he keeps growling. What, the guy keeps growling or his son keeps growling? You have to remember too, when you get involved with somebody, is that you, you're, if you're marrying somebody, if you get into a relationship with somebody, you're developing a relationship with everybody in his family. So you're developing a relationship with his son, his parents, his ex, if his ex is still in the picture because they had a son together, right? And so that's one of the things that you want to think about when you get into a situation. And one of the things that I talk about in some of my other stuff is this place of being in abundance because a lot of women are like, 
there's this one guy, right? And I got to make him love me, but he, his family's crazy. And it's like, okay, well, if you had abundance going on in your life, then this one guy and all of his crazy people that he's around wouldn't be such a thing of like, how do I make him love me and make his family love me? Because you'd be like, I don't know if I want to deal with this, right? <laughs> like I've got these other guys around me that are interesting too, and they don't have crazy exes and crazy kids and crazy parents and stuff that I got to deal with. And so that's one thing that you might want to think about in this situation as well. So Mandy says she's from London. Hey, Mandy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Chelsea says the man I'm seeing has severe anxiety and depression, and I'm pregnant with his baby. He's been hurt so much in his past, he's pulling away. He's pulling me away from him. Yeah, I mean, that happens, you know, in situations. And like I said, you want to give him some space. If he's pulling away from you at all, you want to give him space. It's one of the things I talk about. It's called pacing. And basically what you want to do is mirror his kind of behavior, his interest level. And, and any time that a guy starts pulling away, you want to pull back as well because you don't want to end up smothering him. You don't want to end up chasing him. I know it's probably a difficult situation since you're pregnant and, and it sucks, you know, and, and I, you know, we, I, I could go on a laundry list of different weird situations that have happened in my family where people like, you know, it's, it's a hard situation, but what do you, you know, what, what do you got to do about it is like get other people in your life, have other things going on. Even if you're pregnant, you know, have other people that you're talking to make him not the focus of everything that's going on in your life so that you have other things that you're, you're living for and you're experiencing so that you're not just stuck on him all the time. I get it. I get it. Crystal says she gets it. Amanda says, I get it. I do all these things. Unfortunately, he is so busy working now that I don't get the opportunity to capitalize on these things. Flower Child says support his goals. That's what I'm talking about. Support those goals, Flower Child. So Chelsea says, how can I show him that I'm not like the other women who has hurt him without making it seem like I'm being clingy and needy. Well, what you have to do is you have to be careful with him. You have to give him... being Showing him that you're not like the other women has nothing to do with being needy and clingy. <laughs> like Those two things are completely separate, right? In fact, what you want to do is typically do the opposite, where you're giving him some space, you're allowing him to come and go, right? That's what allows him to find out that you're not going to hurt him. And if he's misinterpreting things that you're doing as you're going to hurt me, that tells you a lot about his situation and what's going on with him. And do I really want to be in this situation where, you know, he has so much distrust for women and whatever, because what what's going to end up happening is if you do get into a relationship with him and he doesn't end up healing these things before you're in that relationship with him, he's going to bring that stuff into the relationship and he's probably not going to heal it because he's getting his needs met with you. And then what could end up happening is he ends up throwing it on you. And so really there's two things that I have to say about this. One is to give him space and allow him to figure this stuff out on his own because that's really the only way that it's going to happen. You're not going to force your him feeling okay and comfortable with you onto him. He has to be able to, he's going to come forward and he's going to be like, oh man, is she, is she trying to hurt me or manipulate me? And you're going to be like, no, you know, and he's either going to like chill out and relax and come back and be like, okay, yeah, you're right. You weren't trying to hurt me. And I figured that out. Or what's going to happen is he's going to continue to kind of project that nonsense onto you and eventually kind of push you away and create a really toxic relationship that you're a part of. And so the real question is, do you really want to be in a relationship with this guy? And, you know, how long have you been seeing him and all that kind of stuff, which another place to come from abundance is. Flower Child says, otherwise accept him and love him for the awesome person he is. Yep. 
Susan says, my man is a good man today, and I believe he will be able to fulfill his goals. He is very good at what he does. Awesome. It's good to hear. Amy says, thank you so much, Matt. You're welcome, Amy. Shereen says, is him talking about his family or telling his family about me emotional? It's a sign. What it is is a sign that says that he likes you because he probably wouldn't be talking to his family about you if he wasn't, if he, if he didn't like you that much. So Militia says, Cape Town, South Africa, welcome, welcome. Men think more logically where us women are more with our hearts. Yep. Flower Child says, yes, notebook. I don't know what that means. That's a movie, right? I haven't seen it. That's a chick flick. I haven't seen that chick flick. Tammy says, what if he's married and getting a divorce? So he says. If he's married and getting divorced, you should probably... I'm actually doing a couple videos in the next two weeks about this where I'm going to be posting them. They're not going to be live streams. But you want to think about it. If I were you, I wouldn't get involved with a guy who's married at all. That's it. <laughs> I wouldn't get involved with a guy who's married at all. Because he might, he might be lying to you. He might be telling you things. He might, it might be more involved. right? He might still be emotionally kind of connected to his ex and so what ends up happening sometimes is guys who are still kind of involved in that one you're going to be getting sucked into that involvement and two what's going to end up happen what could end up happening is he might end up kind of pulling away from her and being around for with you but he's got this deep emotional connection with lots of range and lots of time in with this other woman and that space might make him rethink what's going on with her and he might end up going back to her, which happens all the time. And so you want to be very, very careful with a guy who's married. Be very careful about that. Shirley Adkins says, you are so awesome. I love listening to you. Thank you so much. If you guys don't know it, I love compliments. So if you want to compliment me, please compliment me. I love hearing compliments. Thank you so much, Shirley. I appreciate you complimenting me. So Polly says, hello from Qatar. Hello. Shireen says, but when I talk about it, he changes the subject or he's not comfortable. Well, that tells you something. Grassi gave me 99 cents. Thank you so much, Grassi. I appreciate any money you want to give me. Julia says, hi from Spain. Hello. Marita says, happy and I don't miss him. Okay. DD says, mice are cute. <laughs> All right. Chelsea says, what if he claims he doesn't have any fears? Well, one, he's lying to you <laughs> because everybody has fears. And anybody that says that they don't have fears is either lying or they're delusional. One or the other. <laughs> and, and you don't have to just talk about his fears. You can talk about other things that are going on with him. Maybe a, a lot of guys want to pretend like they don't have fears because it's not very masculine. It's not very manly to talk about fears. And so a lot of, a lot of men have been kind of hurt and abused in the past by talking about those things. They've been, uh, they've been taken for granted or taken advantage of because of talking about those things. So Shireen says, do these techniques work via chat? Get him in person. Stop having conversations all over chat. That's the answer to that. <laughs> you don't want to do this over chat. The magic, the magic happens in person. So get him in person. You want to get him in person, not over chat. Magic happens in person. So cute with eight says it's complicated when you are emotional involved and he won't take he want to take it slow even after 11 months frowny face tried to stop but he always come back and says that he didn't wanted to com continue with me didn't stay for all these months I'm not sure what you're saying right there. Okay, Marita says, stay away from the womanizer, drunks, and possessive man. That's right. Do that. 
Olivia says, hi, Matt. How do I get a man to miss me after he's pulled away due to me being clingy and needy? Worse, after saying I love you, he ghosted me after. <laughs> Didn't contact him about fourth day we talked, but he's cold. First off, do all the things that we talked about. Second off, start with scarcity. <laughs> start with scarcity. Start with chilling out. Start with pulling back. Start with giving him space to miss you and remember the good times. And then do all the things that we talked about. Stay away from being on chat. Stay away from doing phone calls. And focus on, on getting him to meet up with you because that's where the magic happens. And so if he's contacting you again... That means he there's some interest that's redeveloped there and you want to give that some space and give it some oxygen to grow, become that big fire that you want it to be. You got to give him some space. You got to focus on meeting up with him. Stop talking to people over chat. Camila says, yay, another live stream. Camila from Denmark in the house. That's right. Nancy... McLaughlin says, do believe in those phrases that makes men love struck. I think who wants to manipulate anyone? That's right. I don't know what which fr I don't know which phrases you're talking about. Don't know what phrases you're talking about, girl. You gotta tell me which phrases. Tell me which phrases. Alright, so Lorraine says, Hi Matt, I get it. Good. Chelsea says, what is you have very low confidence and don't know how to? I don't know what that means. So, Sissy says, hi, Matt, from New York. Hey, Sissy. Hi, from Chicago. Hi, from Denmark. Met Monk. Yeah. Susanna says, what's narcissist? That's a long subject. So, Cutesy says, I'm trying to lean back when I see that He's cold and he does come back after three days or after a day. There you go. Dee Dee says, a fire grows with air. Genius, man, it does. It grows with air. I'm a genius here. So he is still active on dating app. Yeah, well, that tells you something. What's that tell you? Camila says, I have a question. I have a problem with guys. That's why you're here. They check me out, but they don't approach me. I am by no means a woman that dresses provocatively, nor am I busty or any of that. What could be the reason? There could be a million different reasons why a guy looks at you, but doesn't approach you. One, he might be intimidated. Most guys don't really approach women unless they get some kind of invitation to approach her. Unless he thinks it's going to be in his favor to approach you. <laughs> Unless he thinks that it's going to go really, really well, if he approaches you, he's probably not going to do it. And so you have to give him some kind of indication that you want him to approach you if you want him to approach you. And so, and you, he has to feel like it's going to go well. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. I was going to do a video on that sometime in the near future. And how do I make a guy approach me if he happens to be too shy to do it. You could always approach him, but give him that space to, or you can give, like I said, give him invitations. What you want to do is you want to open doors. You're, you want to be a door opener. You're opening them doors for guys and give them space to come through the door. You don't want to do everything for a guy because that tells you a lot about who this guy is, what kind of a man he is, and how much he likes you, depending on whether he goes through that door or not. And it also tells you how your relationship's going to be in the future. So if you're like, you know, if you're like opening a door and he's not walking through, if you're giving him invitations and he's not coming over, and then you end up, you know, doing everything for him and chasing him and doing all the work, that's going to lead into the relationship what's going to happen if something ends up falling apart and he needs to man up and come in and start being the man. It tells you a lot about what's going on with him. What if you block him? Why would you block him? Okay. So 
Be busy. Flower Child says, be busy and have self-importance. But don't be too busy. Don't be so busy that he can't hang out with you and he can't talk to you and he can't be in your life. Because that happens too. Oracle Katrina, a <laughs> great name, says, how to get back to dating when you've been really hurt? Well, what you need to do is focus on self-love. You need to work on healing yourself. You need to focus on building yourself up, finding things that you love to do in your life, figuring out things that you really like and love about yourself, getting around men in friendship type relationships where you can just build more trust around them and go back to it slowly and just allow your, your heart to heal, go through different trainings. If it's really bad, go through therapy. There's other types of transformational training that you can go through. Join our program actually at thegoddesscommunity.com and we have, Anya has a program in there that's called the Goddess Initiations that's all about connecting back with your heart and healing your heart that you get for free as a part of joining the program. So check that out if you want to. Angel says, what should I do if he doesn't contact me for a few days? Just let him not contact you for a few days. That's what you do. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you really want to, you can reach out, but don't expect anything to happen. And if he doesn't contact you for a few days, you know, you can always reach out to him and just tell him that you're thinking about him or something made you think about him or something like that and just see what he ends up doing as kind of a, uh, kind of a, like a, a barometer for where he is with you at that moment. And just make sure that you don't have any expectations around it. Make sure that you're not chasing him. Make sure that you're not kind of trying to push something forward. Suzanne says, how do I get my husband, who I am currently separated from, interested again? I already know everything about him. <clears throat> so there's, I mean... One, we don't know anything about your situation. You know, who ended up deciding that you needed a separation from who? Was it you? Was it him? What's going on? You know, how much contact did you, have you guys had with each other? You know, what, what I do want to say is that you do want to give him some space and some room and allow him to, to come to you. And, you know, it, it's like, okay... There's, there's just too many questions I have about what's going on in your situation to really know how to work with you in your situation. But what I would say is do all the things that we talk about in this. Go over, there's another live stream that I did called Make Him, Make Him Value You so that he will do anything for you or something like that that I did a few weeks ago. If you want to go check that one out. Demur says, how do I give him space without seeming uninterested in him? Well, you don't want to come off cold. We're not talking about being cold here. We're not talking about never contacting him, never reaching out. We're not talking about any of those kinds of things. We're just talking about not smothering him. We're talking about giving him some room. And, you know, if he hasn't contacted you in a few days, you can contact him, you know, just to tell him that you're thinking about him, see how he reacts to you, that kind of stuff. And if there's nothing, if there's nothing else that you want to, uh, and if there's nothing else that you want to talk about or specific that he talks about with you, then it's kind of a barometer. Like I was just talking about, there's a barometer for what's going on with him and with you. And so you want to just give him, give him some space, but that doesn't mean be being completely cold. It doesn't mean ignoring him. It doesn't mean when he contacts you, you wait days to contact him back. These are all mistakes, right? That will make him think that you're uninterested in him. But if he does contact you and you do talk to him, then you want to be warm and friendly and all that kind of stuff. It's not, you're not seeming uninterested by giving him space. You're seeming uninterested by reacting to conversations with him. Marissa says, I'm seeing... I seeing a guy who's 22 year old and I'm 39. We're having a great time. Does space work on a 22 year old? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. And a 22 year old is pretty young, <laughs> especially a 22 year old guy, right? I don't know what kind of a guy you're seeing who's a 22 year old, but 
my guess would be that he's probably got a lot of other things going on, especially if he's in college or something like that. So you might want to think about that. Camila says, also, what are your thoughts on if the guy a girl likes is in a relationship? Should I try to be his friend to stand by or should I leave him alone? I know he likes me too. Well, if he tries to do anything, if he's trying to pursue something with you, what you should do is just ask him if he is still seeing somebody and if he's still seeing the woman that he's with. And if he is still seeing the woman that he's with, just say, hey, I don't hang out with guys who have girlfriends. If you end up getting single at some point, I like you and I'd love to hang out with you. But just let me know if you guys end up breaking up because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to deal with that. <laughs> I'm not going to be a part of that, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to end up being the other woman. You don't end up, you don't want to date a guy who's cheating on his girlfriend because he will end up probably cheating on you if things go south in your relationship that you end up with. And so you want to wait until he is single and no, you don't want to stand by. You want to go out and date other people. You want to create a fun, awesome life and you want to find somebody that's single that's interested in you. And if he really likes you, he'll get single quick and he'll end up talking to you and figuring out how to make sure that you guys are together. Joanna says, Helena, and you are so cute. Poetry Lover says, she is perfect. Camila says, I think you have a crush on Helena. <laughs> okay. Dee Dee says, Matt, I don't have many things going on socially, though I'm working on changing that. Does it sh still show value if I have hobbies and passions to keep me busy? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, like, turn into an extrovert here, right? <laughs> like... That doesn't mean that you need to like start creating all these things where you're busy out hanging out with people if that's not the kind of person that you are. You just want to have things that you do in your life. I mean, if you're like, you know, I mean, it doesn't even matter. Let's say that you like playing video games. Most women that I talk to don't like playing video games, but sometimes I meet women that love playing video games and you're playing a video game or let's say you're crocheting or let's say that you're, you know, doing underwater basket weaving or whatever kind of cool thing that you like doing. And, you know, the guy's like, hey, you know, I want to hang out. You know, what are you doing right now? And you're just like, you know, you're busy. You're busy doing your thing. You're busy having fun, doing whatever it is that you like to do. And you get to decide from that standpoint when and where you want to hang out with him. And you're going to be busy doing something that you love and that you enjoy so that you're not just constantly sitting there by your phone going, when is he going to contact me again? Right? And so that's what you want to do is you want to have things going on in your life so that you're not being crazy. Truth be told says, nice talk, Matt. Thanks. Donna says, hi, Helena. You're awesome. Oracle Katrina says, how to get back dating after you've been really hurt? We just talked about this. Marissa says, I love this talk. Great. Mello says, hey, Matt, Gracie here from Tampa, Florida. You are so handsome, and thank you for giving us all this advice. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for telling me that I'm handsome. I love that kind of, I love that kind of talk. I love it. Flattery will get you everywhere. Dee Dee says, Helena's a pure soul. <laughs> That's sweet. That is sweet. And when she's and when she's creating videos, she likes to make me sandwiches when she's creating videos. It's a that's a that's an inside joke right there. Oh God, what am I doing? What am I doing to myself? So Houston, Texas, Chicago. Chelsea says the guy that I'm interested in has had a very traumatic childhood he's been diagnosed with severe anxiety and depression and ptsd i'm pregnant with his firstborn son it's difficult it's a difficult situation hello everyone from seattle washington kate from new hampshire lisbon portugal and i was actually thinking about going to portugal here in the next couple months malta cool i love malta i've been there a few times love that place taking it slow with this guy i like Hija. I don't know what that means. 
Linda says, can you do a show on what red flags to look out for in the beginning with a guy? Yes, I was just thinking about doing that today. Yes, I will do that. That he is not ready for anything serious. Yes, yes, I will do that. Patty Doo says, so weird hearing my nickname said with an American accent. Yep, 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 yep. Gazelle says, oh my God, I'm from Cincinnati also, but in Miami now. I concur on the notion of not chasing men and texting them too much. I think that's the biggest mistake we women make. It can be. Another Lisbon, Portugal, Vanessa Manal says... The very best hello to you from Sacramento, Oracle Katrina. First live with you. What's your what's your take on what's your what's your take on dating after you've been really hurt? I just talked about that. I just talked about that, Oracle Katrina. All right, Jamie says I feel like cutting him the mf off. He act like his mom is woman. Is his woman. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I would cut that off. Marita says, I'm from Costa Rica. <laughs> I live in Rhode Island. Cool. Lorraine says, I'm sure Miss Helena Hart feels the same about you, Matt. You're both kind and awesome people. Thank you both for gracing our minds with encouragement on relationships with men in our lives. You are welcome. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Chelsea says, there are times he says he doesn't want anything to do with the baby then the complete opposite how can i tell what's the truth and what's just his anxiety and depression talking well you can look at his actions and so what you want to do is it, it sounds like you guys are having a lot of conflict right now that's what it sounds like and so what you want to do is limit the amount of conflict because the more conflict that you create with him and my guess is that you're probably trying to force things with him because that's that's the only time that guys kind of do that kind of thing where they're like, oh, you know, like why would he say that? He's saying that because he's feeling pressure from you. He's feeling like you're trying to get him to do something or feel a certain way or act a certain way. And then he's acting in a different way because that's what he truly wants. And so what you need to do is chill out on him a little bit and pull back a little bit and relax a little bit and start focusing, like I said, on other things, focusing on making sure that you're taking care of that baby, focusing on making sure that you're relaxing and creating a healthy environment for that baby to grow inside of your womb so that when you do give birth to that baby, it's healthy and functional and it's it feels really good and strong because of you giving it love instead of being in a state of stress and anxiety because of whatever this guy is doing that's in your life. Little Face says, so I'm trying to get this guy back. We dated before and I really want him back and I don't know how to do that. Okay, well, <laughs> please help. It's a big topic, you know, and I don't know anything about your your conversation, your situation. And so I'll probably do some stuff. I'm actually part of the, the new Forever Woman program that I'm putting out here. I'm going to be putting a whole how to get your ex back thing into that. So make sure to go to thegoddesscommunity.com and check out joining our community there. All right, it looks like we're hitting the top of the hour here. So I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to go here. Thank you for everybody being here. Like I said, if you want to join our community, if you're really serious about getting into an amazing relationship, make sure to join our community at thegoddesscommunity.com. And I really appreciate you being here. We're all about helping men and women come together for stronger, more empowering relationships. I'm all about empowering you and helping you have a great relationship and feel like you are strong and confident and can have what kind of relationship that you want with the kind of man that you want. So thank you so much for being here and allowing me to be a part of your journey and and I will see you again in the next live stream. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. And I will talk with you again soon.